is your marketplace. Meet Jenny, Andrew, and Eric. Jenny is single, anxious, and depressed. Eric is fighting an addiction. Andrew is struggling with his sexuality. So they're turning to a life coach for help. Turn on the mic. Yeah, how do I sound right now? Truth is, they're marketplace producers. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. And their stories are made up. Uh, how are you feeling coming into this today? I'm a little nervous. So what is a life coach? So a life coach helps you dream big and stretch your horizons to create a compelling vision for your life. There are thousands out there. And one of the most recognizable? Hi, it's Tony Robbins. Coaching is one of the most valuable tools in the world. It's big business, and many coaches seem to be pulling in big money. My program is top-notch, high-end for 7000 But unlike psychologists and psychiatrists, life coaches are not regulated. And most aren't qualified to treat mental illness. But will they cross that line? That's what we're about to test. Hidden cameras rolling. First up. Let's bring in life coach Giovanni Baccarone. And today I want to talk to you about depression. Um, Antidepressant drugs won't help you. What I do is if people feel depressed or scared or with low self-esteem, in only three to six sessions, you can be happy, strong, with high self-esteem. Eric meets Giovanni at his Toronto office. Eric. Giovanni. Come in, come in. So you went to training at Tony Robbins? The course, yeah. OK. It was, uh, it was simple but effective. Yeah. Behind closed doors, Giovanni isn't following COVID protocols. And you can wear the mask or not. Or... But then our hidden cameras stop working. We continue, audio only. Listening along with us, Lorraine Bennington. She's been a life coach since the 1980s. I want you to take a look at this. Sure. Linda, what's been going on with you? Mean in the sense of anxiety, right? And just kind of ebbing and flowing with depression. You can help me with my anxiety and depression. So I don't help people with anxiety and depression. I help them feel good. Yeah, you help them feel good. Yeah, no matter how many pills you pop, if your mindset is, you know, A, B, and C, you're always going to feel depressed. So 90 whatever percent of people uh, that I worked with have gotten every result. Absolutely dismissive, minimizing. This is serious stuff and to just simply say i'm going to make you feel good is well it's so dismissive of how deeply this person is going through what they're going through lorraine would know she's also a licensed psychologist accountable to a governing body a life coach by themselves is not a therapist if somebody comes to me and they're depressed or they have anxiety I'm gonna be able to help them with that because it's part of my training. Is part of the problem you think that anyone can become a life coach? Yes, and yes, they aren't skilled with or understanding of mental illness. They may not even recognize they shouldn't be going there. So how many are going there? No regulation means no one's keeping track. That's why we're on this undercover spot check. Rhonda? Oh, hi. Hey, hey. Next up, life coach Rhonda Gagnon. Her office, the neighborhood Timmy's. She charges $150 an hour for this. Coaching means I am not your teacher. I am not your, your therapist. I am not your best friend. Eric shares his fake story. With drinking, I think it's getting worse and mm -hmm. leads to drugs. I'm just wondering like how want to get an assessment of whether they need to be treated. Or I can't tell you that. I am not a doctor. Right. So far, so good. She clearly points out her limitations as a life coach, but then she flips the script. Do you think you can help me with the substance stuff thing? I can. I can help you with ideas of how to cope with it. Okay. What your triggers are. Everybody has a crutch. I'm just drinking. One in one cups of tea this size every day. Jeez. 
because I thought that would replace food. I'm now down to like two, three cups. Now we want to know what training she has to treat these serious issues. And certification stuff, does that matter to you or how, how does that work with you? I am certified. Okay. I decided I wanted to do it for me. How long did it take? That took probably about uh, close to nine months. Oh, wow. What school? It is, oh my gosh, I'm so bad with me. Uh, it's uh, life coaching. Okay. Sorry, I've got my certificate. It's on the website. She can't remember? We find Rhonda's certification on her site from the Life Coach Training Institute. And all it takes to get a certificate from the school is this online test for roughly $250. So I'm gonna try it out while shopping. This is cute, okay. I bypass the course material, no studying, no prep work, and go straight to the multiple choice test. 65 questions in all. Which deals with helping people get well? Coaching, consulting, counseling, mentoring. And I got it right. He's a nice color. I'm on my last question, here we go. I got that wrong. I failed. Good news is, I can take the test as many times as I want. I pass on my second try. It took about an hour. It's dangerous because people are presenting themselves as experts when they're not. There are a few really good training institutes, and then there's programs like the one you talked about, which isn't a program at all. When we tell the Life Coach Training Institute about our test... We do have safeguards in place. They failed when your guys went through. The founder, Paul Dabdub, steps up with this response. Life coaching is not for people suffering from trauma, mental or emotional disorders, and life coaches are not trained to deal with these conditions. In an email, Rhonda says she is able to help people because of her life experience and other training. And in a later session with Eric, she offers him some good advice. If you are having an episode, call the medical help line. Back with Giovanni. So I don't help people with anxiety or depression. I help them feel good. Yeah. We want to know how much feeling good is going to cost. Uh, most people invest between five and ten thousand uh, dollars for their results. But when do you have to know that? Uh, the end of this conversation. Uh, Give me. Give me a little bit of time to think about it. It's just making me question, you know, is Eric ready for this? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm seeing some hesitations. So now I'm kind of asking myself, again, maybe we're not a good fit. The paradox is I'm not pressuring you, so then let me pressure you. Because it does give the industry a bad rap. What's sad is that there are coaches out there who are genuinely good at what they do. When Althea Branton looked into becoming a life coach, she admits the promise of making big bucks in the industry were persuasive. And I thought, well, yes, right? Why not? That sounds amazing. But the more and more I got into it, the more I realized I genuinely want to help people. You're not a life coach anymore, are you? I am not a life coach anymore. Why not? I do believe in coaching. I believe that it can work. But now it's just marketed as a way to get rich quick. Do I want to just sell, sell, sell? Or do I want to genuinely help somebody? So he just kept saying that we should keep on going with our sessions, upselling me on another session. Amanda got the hard sell and more from her former life coach. She says she had to see a therapist after her traumatic experience. I was in so much distress. We're concealing her identity because she fears for her safety. Did he ever threaten you? He said, you're not allowed to talk bad about me, and if you ever leave a bad review or anything like that, I will come after you. That was a threat. That was absolutely 100% a threat, yes. She notices other red flags, like inappropriate comments. He would just throw it in about how I looked, you're very sexy, and then it, he got comfortable saying that and incessant calls. I picked up and he just kept hammering me with questions about where I was, 
like my gut was telling me this is this guy's dangerous and he could hurt me. Amanda stops seeing her life coach, loses nearly $3,000 and has no place to file a complaint. Should there be more safeguards in place in this industry? Absolutely, yes. Hi, Jennifer. Yep. Hello, it's Karen Allen calling. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Back on our undercover test, Jenny meets our third life coach, Karen Strang Allen. I've been trained by uh, uh, Tony Robbins, best trainers. But her coaching comes at a steep cost. So the regular investment for the program is 11K Canadian. But if you sign up on the call, I give you what's called a fast action discount. And I actually take 3,000 off. All I need is a deposit of 500 plus tax uh, to lock in the discounted rate. What's on your mind? Sales pitch. What do you mean? It operates on scarcity. It's time limited. Whenever someone's pushing that hard, the smartest thing is walk away. On her site, Karen says she specializes in empowering single women. Jenny has her cover story ready. Like, am I going to be alone forever? And then I kind of like spiral and it gets like a little bit dark and I like can't get out of bed. I would like to, you know, not be in that place and not have to rely on these antidepressants. Just so you know, so coaching, I don't prescribe medications or anything like that. So I will never tell you to come off your meds. Remember, most coaches aren't qualified to treat mental illness. But I will say that a large number of my clients have anxiety and depression, sometimes even more significant issues like being bipolar and they're feeling you know, so much better that they can either reduce or go off their meds. So for, for someone like me, then you would recommend like going through you rather than therapy? I don't want to knock therapy, it has its place, but part of the thing I don't like about it is it creates a dependency on the therapist. And I teach you how to do this stuff yourself. I'm gonna be honest, you're not gonna get the answers through therapy. I know I can help you. Oh my, oh my, okay. <laughs> this I have a problem with. What's the problem? She can't make this recommendation that this is not going to work. And there is this sense of salesmanship of, I want you to come to me and not to a therapist, which is a very strange, inaccurate, potentially dangerous statement. You know, our undercover test is heating up. I don't want to. Our most shocking session. You desexualize the desire for men. You can't afford to miss your marketplace. This is your marketplace. We're undercover testing life coaches. Many coaches do what looks like therapy, even if they're saying it isn't therapy. Our producer, Andrew, is about to meet American life coach, Rich Weiler. I usually start with some deep breathing. Inhale deeply. And exhale slowly. Can I open my eyes now? Yeah. He has clients all over the world, including Canada. I'm self-taught. So I don't have a degree. I don't have a license. But Rich's program is almost entirely dedicated to a discredited and damaging practice, conversion therapy. And I've known Men, and I've experienced this myself, that you can get to a place where you desexualize the desire for men. I know a lot more than your typical therapist does about this. Andrew is openly gay, but for this assignment, he's pretending to struggle with his sexual identity. I don't want to be gay. I don't want to be attracted to men. So. I love men, I love being with men, but none of that is sexual, right? I just can't believe that he hasn't learned from the people that he has hurt. Matt Ashcroft warns this type of life coaching is life altering. Um, it broke me. I, uh, I have a lot of PTSD. I wasn't really educated of anything queer related, so I did not know what I was getting myself into. How would you describe your experiences with Rich? I remember Rich would be snarky and rude. I was really upset with 
the way that he was talking about my medication to other participants, he treated me like garbage. And he recalls one incident that haunts him at Rich's conversion camp in the U.S., where he says one man is asked to reenact his sexual assault. So I remember hearing this guy screaming and yelling at the top of his lungs, stop, 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 stop. I, I still hear his screams, like, every single time that I go to sleep. It's OK. Take your time. Usually when people deny themselves, they, it comes with a lot of mental illness. I tried to overdose on drugs. I just didn't feel like anybody would care about me. <sighs> Sorry. You take a break? Let's take a break, Matt. It's OK. That's hard. Being gay isn't an illness. We don't need to fix it. Lorraine Bennington is a life coach and licensed psychologist. It's just so disrespectful of the person. What does that tell you about the industry? That it's a problem that it isn't regulated. In our session with Rich, we test how he responds to signs of mental distress. You know, I've, I've considered, like, harming myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that it would cause you that much pain. That's really unfortunate. When you say you were as early as junior high, you felt that attraction. Was it to boys your age? So if the potential client says, I'm thinking of self-harm, all the alarm bells need to go off. And the first time it's mentioned, the next sentence would be, tell me about that. So what should a coach do? when they realize that their client needs a mental health professional. Refer to a psychologist or a registered clinical counselor instead of trying to muddle through themselves when they don't have that training. Andrew mentioned self-harm again. I wonder if you can help with my depression and with these thoughts of self-harm. Still, let me, let me no referral. So on the Brothers Road website, um, there's a, a section called Common Histories. I mean, I'm in a bad place. I, I think sometimes it would be easier just to, just to like take my own life. Finally, after the fourth mention, Rich does what he's supposed to do. If the self-harm is serious, then you need to be talking uh, to a, a psychiatrist or psychologist. Conversion therapy is now illegal in Canada. It happens weeks after our last session with Rich. Matt was pivotal in pushing for a ban. Why are you speaking out against Rich Weiler? Because I'm still living with the pain and the suffering at this very day. But I also want to try to prevent folks uh, like Rich to not do this to anybody ever again. Time for an intervention. As a life coach, you really shouldn't be offering mental health advice. Do you have a story you want us to investigate? Write to us, marketplace at cdc.ca. This is your marketplace. Our hidden cameras catch life coaches offering potentially harmful advice and major upsells. Time to reach out to them, starting with Giovanni Macaroni. So I don't help people with anxiety depression. I help them feel good. He won't talk on camera. Tells us in a statement he deeply regrets what he said and apologizes for any hurt he may have caused. We follow up with a call. Inspire yourself, life coach, and Giovanni speaking. I'm Asha Tomlinson with CBC Marketplace. Now, I know in your statement you apologize for anything you said, but what specifically are you apologizing for? It's a good question. So I'm just going to keep the statement as is and not add anything to it. No, so you don't have an opinion on the fact that, as a life coach, you really shouldn't be offering mental health advice. And again, no comment. We give Rich Weiler a ring, too. You get to a place where 
that you desexualize the desire for men. They know a lot more than your typical therapist does. This is Rich Weiler. This is both my personal and business line, so please leave a message. So we've been reaching out to you for weeks now to get an on-camera interview. Give us a call, Rich. We'd love to hear from you. No call back. But we do know he's previously denied what Matt says happened at his camp. I'm still recovering from it. I still have nightmares because of it. Rich says in an email, our hidden camera investigation is a joke. And Karen Strang-Allen? The regular investment for the program is 11 k Canadian. But if you sign up on the call, it actually takes 3000 off. Our undercover producer, Jenny, confronts her during a session. Yeah, I just felt like it was a, you know, a lot of pressure to make a decision on the spot with a, a really significant amount of money. So it was certainly not meant as, as pressure, Jennifer. It's meant as, a, as an incentive. Karen offers a refund. But when we reveal who we are and ask about her views on therapy, Karen tells us through her lawyer she does screen for mental illness to the best of her ability and refers clients to a mental health professional when needed. She admits she could have better worded her advice on whether our producer should seek therapy. And now her website has this disclaimer. They cannot provide treatment for a mental illness nor provide advice on medications. Meantime, Lorraine has some tips when looking for a life coach. Look for years of experience. Look for training, look for background. It, it would be helpful if they also had some psychological awareness because all of this has its um, impact on success and motivation.